And a very warm welcome to Amhara Media Corporation, Amhara TV News. This is our daily news live from the studio. I'm Gaila Damu. Stay with us. Senior policy advisor to the Prime Minister noted at the Mendeley at this work forum organized by the Office of the Prime Minister that the formation of a new government will lay foundation for a better Ethiopia beyond a formal political transition. Process Brahan Work and reports. The discussion held yesterday under the title New Contract in New Spirit Government Formation and Nation Building mainly focused on what the new government needs to do and nation building. At the discussion, experts drawn from various sectors presented discussion papers on nation building, national security, economic issues, and civil service. Senior policy advisor to the Prime Minister, Mamma Mheratu, said Ethiopia has economic, social, and security problems that need to be overcome. For instance, he noted that more than 60 million Ethiopians do not have access to electricity. Therefore, the new government will be responsible in overcoming Ethiopia's complex problems, the senior policy advisor stated, adding that formation of a new government will lie the foundation for a better Ethiopia beyond former political transition. <laughs> It is possible to say that this year's new government formation has brought two objectives historically. Primarily, it will pave a good platform to conduct successful election in every five years in Ethiopia. Moreover, it will make the public participatory and work on to reach a national consensus among the people. Therefore, the new government is going to be formed and it will transform the country and it will direct us to reach our national consensus. A state minister at the office of Prime Minister Fasai Tagasu said on his part, nation building needs to be based on brotherhood and national identity. He stressed the issues of democracy and freedom, especially in multi-ethnic countries like Ethiopia, should be resolved in a spirit of brotherhood. Furthermore, Fasa elaborated that nation building could be successful by working on the next generation. The state minister noted building independent institutions, creating trust beyond the government and the people, and building a strong democratic system are also key pillars for nation building. Mainly, when we do on the upcoming new generation, it is possible to reach on national consensus and nation building. It plays a great role for the new generation to be proud of Ethiopia and stand in unison. Therefore, we have to work on our education system, culture and media. In fact, working on the new generation will take a long time. However, the result will come after 15 years. Katai tulu des anat lay mi sarasra, gize fajad, kazari asram sahamet walagin, utet mi ametau. Defense force capacity building research director Colonel Fikra Yesus Kabeda said, building a strong defense force is part of building a strong government. One of the key ways to build a strong defense force is to free the institution from political partisanship, he said, adding that the new army building strategy is based on this principle. The director stated this will enable to build an effective army. According to him, the army building involves all nations, nationalities, and peoples. <laughs> In the process of building a strong defense force, the defense force is free from any kind of political partisanship. This will make the national defense force more professional and focus on its mission. In addition to this, it will make the institution as an institution to ensure its sustainability. 
the other panelists, Planning and Development Commissioner Fetsum Asafa said the new government will continue implementing the policies and documents prepared over the last three years. When we look from the perspective of economy, especially before three years and within three years, there was inflation, joblessness, huge national debt, shortage of foreign currency exchange, and other problems on the government. Therefore, the new government, which is going to be formed, should solve this and other macroeconomic imbalances facing the country by bringing structural solutions to solve the existing problems. Civil Service Commissioner Bazab Gabriyesu said one of the obstacles to state building in Ethiopia is the poor performance of the public sector service delivery. He pointed out that new measures should be put in place to curb malpractices and digital digitalization of public services is crucial to control corruption. Based on the new contract, through performance agreement, appointed leaders will carry out tasks. That is what we are trying to deploy. This includes improving working freedom and empowering skill of civil servants. We are working, hoping that the coming civil servants will be familiar with these new tools with open mentality. Tigray Democratic Party of its head said that leaders of the terrorist TPLF are now dis the disarray as the clique suffered huge losses in all fronts. Fagardi Zaudu tells us more. In an exclusive interview with Ethiopian news agency, the office head Tashala Negu said the terrorist TPLF is seemingly threatened with fracture in the inner circle. Even if an in-depth analysis is required to speak with certainly about the ongoing dispute within the leadership. He added some of the military leaders gave a press conference last week and it is clear from their statements that there is a new faction in opposition to the TPLF, although they did not explicitly state it about this. TPLF now the TPLF leaders are purging one another in the 11th hour. It is of course the tradition of the group to violently remove its leadership. The internal squabbling has now surf surfaced again, even if they are now bandits. The officer noted this is a result of the defeat the terrorists are facing in the hands of the United Forces in the Amhara and Afar regions. It is to be recalled that the TPLF leadership has been advancing its terror activities by invading Amhara and Afar regional states. <laughs> TPLF had been terrorizing Ethiopia during its 27 year in power and in Tigray for the past three years. It has eventually lost its ability to govern and became involved in banditry by declaring war on neighboring Amhara and Afar peoples. According to him, this aggression has caused mass killings of not only people but also domestic animals killed by the terrorist group. Teshala elaborated as the Ethiopian people mobilized all their resources to repulse the invaders and crush them. The terrorist group was severely beaten and driven out of Afar region. Similarly, they suffered huge losses in Maizamre Front. He said some 80% of the terrorist group's resources accumulated over the years have also been lost or confiscated. According to the head, TPLF is now giving a week-long military training for children and sending them to the war front. The head noted this and other pressures, including protests from the people of Tigray, have now resulted in differences among the leaders. <laughs> Uh, 
No. It is a matter of time, but the differences may lead to total breakdown. This makes it clear to all that the TPLF leadership is inherently incapable of solving problems through negotiation. Therefore, it is not surprising that this is happening when they are on the verge of collapse or disintegration. <laughs> Researchers say that the new government needs to closely work with international organizations and expose undue external pressure by foreign powers to the international community. Gradi Zaudu has the details. Institute of Strategic Affairs senior researcher Mohamed Seir told Ethiopian news agency that the new government should work hard to stop foreign interference in the domestic affairs of Ethiopia and against the sovereignty of Ethiopia. He said the motive behind the undue pressure, including sanction, is to meet their geopolitical interests with respect to Nile waters and other issues in the region. The new government should expose this unfair meddling of some foreign powers to the international community by closely working working with regional and international bodies and convince the international community about the undue pressure of the foreign powers and interference in the internal affairs of Ethiopia. This, you know, uh, something against, you know, the sovereignty of, you know, the country, right? So uh, this has to be, you know, uh, averted by any means that the government should work hard on this, you know, uh, issue in collaboration with regional tools like African Union, IGAD and the United Nations and uh, just, you know, telling the truth what is happening in India, all right? So uh, by doing so that, you know, we can avert the influence of, you know, external uh, pressure, especially from United States of America. He added, besides working in cooperation with the international community, the government should invite independent investigators to look into the atrocities committed by the terrorist TPLF group. The senior researcher stated that the people of Ethiopia also expect the new government to ensure peace, security, economic and social development in the country. And we need to invite you know, the international community to investigate you know, what happened in Ethiopia, especially in Amhara region, for example, you know, Agamsa and other you know, uh, uh, areas where atrocities, atrocities were you know, committed by TPLF. Institute of Strategic Affairs researcher Tesfaye Bazabe said on his part that the intention of some of the external powers is to bring to power a puppet government by disrupting the democratic process in Ethiopia. He added, interfering in the domestic affairs of the country and disrupting the democratic process is not acceptable. Any kind of sanctions might hurt Ethiopia, but we need to keep our democracy, we need to keep our sovereignty. So any kind of international actors which just come to in our sovereignty is an attack. Therefore, we do not need any kind of uh, poking movement in that sense. He added, the international community needs to be aware that Ethiopia is entertaining democracy and trying to solve its domestic problems by itself and domestic problems need to be solved by locally, not by foreign interventionists. He stated that the sixth general election has laid foundation for Ethiopians to begin a democratic era which culminates the formation of a new government. Agency for Refugees and Returnees Affairs has called upon the international community to step up support for more than 900,000 refugees in Ethiopia. Abeba Burhani has more. In his exclusive interview with Ethiopian News Agency, Agency for Refugees and Returnees Affairs Director General Tesfaun Gobezi stated that Ethiopia is implementing world's most progressive refugee proclamation that grants refugees with an array of socio-economic rights. He also said that Ethiopia has been working to create job opportunities for the refugees in joint projects and in micro and small enterprises. 
However, the Director General has called for an increased support from the international community towards the over 900,000 refugees scattered in 26 refugee camps across the country. Ethiopia has pledged to the international community to create job uh, opportunities for refugees in a joint project ap approach and also in different micro and small enterprises. So what we are calling for the international uh, community is to to in to comply their end because it's not only Ethiopia that pledged Ethiopia pledged to give the opportunity to create the guidelines the necessary um, uh, frameworks for the refugees but we are also calling for international community to step up their uh, assistance to the operation so that we can fulfill the, the pledges we are made where we have already made Following the approval of the proclamation, he said the government of Ethiopia has enlisted resident permit guidelines and prepared manuals that bridge the guidelines set out in the proclamation. He added the government, together with partners, is also undertaking an irrigation project that benefited over 30,000 refugees and hosting communities to mainly ensure the refugees' self-reliance in food security. Uh, we have enlisted some uh, guidelines that, that can serve as uh, bridges to realize uh, the proclamation and the guidelines that are set out in the proclamation. Th these are the residence permit proclamation, the residence permit guideline, and also other manuals that would help us to, uh, to fulfill the, the pledges we made in the, in the pledge, in the proclamation. It was learned that the proclamation allows refugees to obtain work permits, access primary education, obtain driver's license, legally register life events such as birth and marriage, and open up access to national financial services such as banking. He pointed out that they have the right to work, own license, bank account, and freedom of movement and out-of-camp privileges for those who comply with the guidelines. The law has given an array of rights to refugees who are staying in Ethiopia to realize these aims. The agency is also working with international community to make sure that refugees who are staying in Ethiopia have self-reliance. He added that the agency is working on self-reliance and other durable solutions for the refugees. At the heart of the framework is a more comprehensive response to displacements in which refugees are included in national services like health and education rather than setting up parallel systems. It also focuses on ensuring refugees have the opportunity to be self-reliant and can contribute to local economies in a way that also benefits their hosts. Agency for Refugees and Returnees Affairs Director General indicated that humanitarian operation should not be subjected to political affiliations of countries. We believe that uh, refugee operation is a humanitarian operation and it shouldn't be subject to political uh, interpretation or political alignment of countries and we still strongly believe that the uh, hosting the refugees and um, helping them to uh, self-reliance is uh, in the best interest of every country in, this, in the world. It's not only Ethiopia's responsibility to take care of refugees and we don't think that um, this should be subject to any kind of political affiliation or disaffiliation between countries. Most of the over 900,000 refugees in Ethiopia live in underdeveloped localities that need different developments, with about 45% living in Gambela region. The agency is also working in partnership with partners for the safety of refugees in area of insecurity, particularly in Tigray. The refugees in Ethiopia mainly came from neighboring countries, including Eritrea, Somalia, South Sudan, but also from other African and Middle East countries. The parliament adopted revisions in the existing refugee law in 2019 to create favorable conditions for refugees in the country, which was held by the international community. That's all the news we have for today. I'm Gayla Damu. Many thanks for watching and stay tuned with the rest of our programs.